your life, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> opens the door of your soul. That's the truth, not my opinion. It's the coolest thing, <coughs> Conscious, subconsciously. 
door opens. And you, can, you have an opportunity to be with God. All right? What's our next one?
couple of things come to mind that I want to share with you as we go into our learning time. <clears throat> Number one, in case you don't know that, Kaylee on the keyboard wrote that song. Inspired, inspired of God at the uh, age of 15 to write beautiful music. I just praise God for that. This is the neat. And then the second thing, you know, the one thing I swore I wouldn't do when I began the service was fall into I or, or stay in my own generational context. Okay? That's a social science term. Staying in your generational context. So I'm, I'm sitting here passing out postcards to give you, invite people to come to church, and it hits me like a ton of bricks. I'm locked into my generational context. That's what we would do 30 years ago. That's what we do 40 years ago. What I should be telling you to do is take a video of yourself that tells how much you appreciate what's going on here and post it on every social media account that you have. That would be the logical way to invite people to come to church outside of my general context, generational context. So I apologize for my limiting of my thinking and ask that you would do that. Obviously something's going on. You keep coming back every week. So share what's going on. Share some 30, 45 second something or other that means something to you that's going on here and invite people to come and be a part of this to see what happens. All right? And for old school people like me, hand the postcard out. <laughs> now this morning we're going to do our learning time like we've done a couple of times before. And when I announced that on the one call yesterday, I wasn't sure if no, nobody would come or a whole bunch of people would come. I think this is a really cool way to learn. I don't want to do this every Sunday, but I think one out of four or five is very appropriate. All right. So we're going to gather around seven tables around seven tables around the room. And there's a sheet like this on each table. It tells you what to do. We need a facilitator. We need a scripture reader. We need a, a question reader. And we need a recording secretary who will report the findings of the uh, or the consensus of the group at the end of all of this, all right? And as I've done in times past, at the end of all of this, we're going to give the flowers away. So, all right. And today's questions are, there are some of them are very easy and some of them are very deep. And so, we'll give the time and don't be afraid to speak up, all right? And to try to mix things a little differently, I'm going to number from the back to the front. So we're going to number off one through seven. And then go to the table that the, is the number that you said, and we'll begin our exercise. All right, back to the center now. I'm going to ask you to kind of wrap up and pull attention. All right, I'm going to go around the room and ask that answers each one of these questions, all right? So question one, group one. What's, what sign could Jesus do in Brushville this week that you think would get the majority of the people to believe he was for real? We said, Thoughts? We said a housing development for one of the lighthouses for the needy, or a major industry coming in that pulls more people to our community, or something big that would come in to help kids. Today. All right. Number two, what was your answer? Uh, we put that he could appear. Um, it would be like a ball of fire somewhere in town, or that something would happen that could be all right. The first group said uh, a new plant coming to town or a big development or a, um, a big economic change. And the second group said if he appeared in a ball of fire or some dramatic presentation. Number three. Coming down riding on a horse. Coming down through the sky. Coming down through the sky on a horse. Number four. We would come back so we could see how many people don't believe without seeing their spectacle. Coming in a visible form. Number five. We talked about um, like answering specific prayers to show people that specifically non-believers. Okay, so you would pray three specific prayers? So well, like we just interpreted it as the majority of people living in Rushville probably don't believe him. They don't. So answering those specific Are, prayers might okay. show them that he is real. All right. Answering specific prayers from non-believers to show that he's real. Essential, right? Yeah. Okay, number six. We said uh, just if there was a, a day or a week or a period of time without crime with everyone in Russia, getting along. Ah, interesting. Yeah. A day of peace, a day of calm and quiet. No one upset or crying at each other. That's cool. Number seven. We 
said if there was a miraculous healing of those in town who were fighting major illnesses. A miraculous healing of the people who were sick and ill. Very good. Now, the hard question. Is it wrong to ask for a sign? Table one, yes or no? Yes, because if you're questioning the existence, then you have to question your faith. <coughs> good answer. Number two, yes or no? Uh, we put them on shirts. Sure. Okay. Number three, yes or no? No. It's not wrong. Number four, yes or no? We say not necessarily wrong, but we should have faith without it. Not necessarily wrong. Number five, yes or no? We put no that some people need that sign to make the commitment. Okay. Number six, yes or no? We said it's not wrong to ask, but wrong to deny that he doesn't already exist. All right. Number seven, yes or no? We said no. You may not get the sign you're looking for. Okay? Now, what I'm about to answer, my answer is a bit hypocritical because when I decided that I didn't want to be a minister, I asked God to give me a sign, an undeniable sign, that He didn't want me. And He gave me a sign. So I can't hardly answer what I'm about to answer, but it is wrong to ask for a sign because a sign eliminates all faith. If God showed up in a burning ball in the middle of the town and we announced God is going to show up at 5 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon in the middle of town with a ball of fire, and he does, does that not remove all doubts? And Jesus says, I want you to come by faith. If he proves his existence, there is no faith. We have proof. There's a lot of evidence, but there's no solid proof. So, um, I, this is a question, two questions. It wasn't on your sheet that I'd like to ask you. What town was Jesus born in? Anyone? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. You know what the literal translation of Bethlehem is? I did not know this until this week. House of bread. All right. That'll have meaning in a couple of minutes. All right. Question number three. Are you disgusted by Jesus' command to eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink the blood? No, it's commitment. It's commitment. Answer number one. Good. Number two. No, it's startling. It's startling. Okay, number three. I'm sure it's a No, because it's not what he actually meant. Good answer. Number four. No. No. Number five. No, it's not literal. No, it's not literal. Good answer. Number six. We were to say no because you can't take it literally. Good. Seven. No, we understand it's symbolic. It's symbolic, which is the answer to the next question as well. All right, which gets us to number five. So what is Jesus asking us to do? How do you know when it's time to eat dinner? Table one? An internal feeling. An internal feeling. Very good. Number two, how do you know when it's time to eat dinner? When you're hungry. Number three, how do you know when it's time to eat dinner? They don't ever eat dinner. <laughs> how do you know when it's time to eat dinner? <laughs> There you go. When you're hungry. All right, number four. When you're hungry. When you're hungry. Number five. Your body tells you. When your mother tells you. Your body. body. When your body tells you. Okay. Number six. Uh, when, when your body tells you, just like with uh, you know, consistently. Good. Good. Number seven. Okay. What do we call that feeling of hunger? What do we call that term? What is the term for that? <laughs> no. We call that appetite. Do you know that there's a medical condition that people do not have an appetite? There are people who are born without the ability to be hungry. Can you imagine such a thing? And what is the biggest problem they have? Remembering to put food in their body so they don't die of malnutrition and starvation. All right. When this appetite, this hunger hits and the food is in front of you, how do we receive any nutritional value? Number one. We consume it and we actively put it in our bodies. Number two. We eat it. Number three. We eat the We we enter six and five together. Okay. All right. Number four. Eat it. Eat it. Number five. Consume it. Consume it. Number six. Um, yeah. Nutrition for the soul is what, what we have yeah. 
That's fine. That's fine. Number seven. <coughs> Take the food and put it in your face. All right. <laughs> Take the food and put it in your face. Once it gets in your body, how does it? How does it? Uh, how does the food come to benefit you? We process it. You process it. Number two. Digest it. You digest it. Number three. Jesus will always give us the All right. Spiritual answer. Thank you. Number four. Uh, gives us nutrition and energy. Okay. Number five. Your body breaks it down and processes it. Your body breaks it down and processes it. Like that answer. Number six. It is the fuel that keeps us going. Amen. Number seven. Nurtures our bodies, our minds, our spirits. All right. And how often does a healthy person eat? Based on personal hunger. All right. Number two. Uh, seven days, small meals a day. Thank you. Number three. Thank you. Number four. Three times a day or when you're hungry. Three times a day when you're hungry. Number five. Often small meals. Often. Thank you. Number six. Multiple times daily when you're hungry. Thank you. Number seven. Several times a day. All right. Based on the answer to question five, how should we interpret Jesus Christ's commitment to eat his flesh and drink his blood? We will take from his word what our body needs at the time. Take from his word what our body needs. Is that what you said? All right. Number two. Take him in and allow him to work in us. All right, number three. Take him in. Take him in. Number four. Uh, we should take him in daily so that our heart will be full and happy and we'll be able to live eternally just as food lets us live. I love it. Number five. When we need it, we take or consume often until fulfilled. Thank you. Number six. Following him in his way always. Thank you. Number seven. We should understand that our souls are hungry for him several times a day, therefore we should feed our souls with him. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to give you something. And I'm going to give you... Do you think I'm going to give you something that is bad to eat that will hurt you? No. When I give you something that would poison you, Yes or no? Why would I not do that? Why would I not give you something to poison me? Your pants. <laughs> Why would I not give you something to hurt you? Because I love you. I love you. I want nothing but the best for you. So the thing I'm giving you and I've given too many other tables and I have to go back and <laughs> What do you think I want you to do with this? Well, I want, to watch, I want you to eat it. Why do I want you to eat it? Do you get what I'm doing? I'm giving you the bread of life. I am figuratively and literally giving you the bread of life. But it does you no good if you won't take it out of the wrapper. It does you no good if you don't believe I'm giving you the good, good word of life. It does you no good if you don't eat it. Did I ask you to swallow the whole thing all at once? I want you to take it one little bite at a time. I want you to believe it and take it one bite at a time. I want you to take it out of the wrapper and trust that I'm giving you something good and take it one bite at a time. People believe, people think that they can't accept Jesus Christ until they know all the answers. They, don't, they think they, don't, they, they, they can't accept Jesus Christ until they can explain Christian theology, until they can answer all the problems of the Bible. No. One little bite. Jesus says, take that which you are given. <laughs> Jesus says, take the little bit of faith that you have and bring it to me. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> take one bite and get it back. One bite. Just take what you know to be true and trust Jesus. Take the bread of life and use it. Put it to use in your life. Jesus says, you will not go to heaven if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood. And he's specifically saying, 
Just in the same way that this bread will do you no good if you leave it in the bag. The Word of God will mean nothing until you take it in and digest it and accept the Gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not literal. It's figurative. You come here, you are offered the bread of life, and the question is, what do you want to do with it? Thank you for coming this morning. Would you bow your heads, please? Holy Father, would you bless the bread that is preached? Bless the bread that you have given us. The knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May people take it one bite at a time, chew it slowly, swallow it, digest it, and let it change their lives. Let it become a part of who they are. Let it feed their souls. And may they understand that you never intended them to swallow the whole thing in one bite, but a little bit at a time as they're able and as they're curious. May we translate this spiritual ser sermon illustration into the spiritual knowledge that it is, the truths, except one bite at a time as we're able, and let it digest into our souls. These things I ask in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whoever served as the recording secretary at the table, the flowers are yours. And I failed to pass the offering bags before. If you would be so gracious as to put an offering in the bag before you leave, that would be deeply appreciated. Thank you very much. We are not going to have a closing song. The service has come to an end.